All right, y'all. I have not slept, so forgive me if I'm a, a little bit delirious. Um, let's talk about this Nyla Ray situation. Uh, Nyla Ray, I think y'all know, everyone's seen this story by now. Um, you know, the, the OF model who gave her life to Christ. She was recently on a uh, Michael Knowles interview. I watched the entire Michael Knowles interview. I thought it was a really good interview. Um, it definitely gave me a deeper perspection, perspection, perspective. Um, this this is the not sleeping thing I was talking about. It definitely gave me a, a deeper per, uh, seps, perception. <laughs> Should I just go to bed? <laughs> it gave me a deeper perception of uh of of you know of her it really did um i have some thoughts i have some opinions i have some things i want to get off my chest which is why i'm making this video um i guess she shared her personal testimony i don't know it, let me let me play this video because there might be some people in the audience um or watching who may not know who she is so let me share this testimony and then we could really have a conversation once we have a you know some context established. All right, so let me go back here and let me play this video. Everybody, okay. So really quick, I have a couple things to address, and I just need you to listen to me. So I've had quite a few people reach out to me, comment, you know, just truly curious about what and why I changed. So, so listen, I was. A pastor's kid for almost all my life. I grew up in church. I was always in church. You know, I was also homeschooled. So my life truly felt like a cage. And I'm not saying Christianity is a cage. I'm saying religion was the cage. I was a Baptist, you know, I was a Baptist pastor's child for the longest time, right? Me and my family did not have a good relationship and I'm the middle of five children. So I'm talking about my other brothers and sisters and my parents. It just truly felt like such a cage. I was a very rebellious child, like sneaking out when I was like 16 years old. I was like, I was just going the wrong way, right? So... I don't I don't want, I don't mean to be rude. I'm just thinking cuz intrusive thoughts just come into my mind sometimes. Could you imagine being a a a, a PK, a pastor's kid and ultimately becoming an SEX worker? Could you I, just from the family dynamic. And she kind of spoke about it a little bit. Well, not a little bit. She spoke about it a lot in her interview with Michael Knowles. That's a tough situation. That's a tough situation. I mean, from like a, a parental standpoint, from a parental perspective, that's like, I don't want to be rude, but that's like a nightmare for real, you know? And I, I'm i sure that was tough on her trying to navigate through that, as it should be, because look, that's a sinful profession that you chose and I think she was very aware of that when she chose it and I'll say this well ha. so here's the thing about this video I made this video already and I didn't post it the reason why is because I didn't like my articulation of my thoughts in the video I felt like it wasn't a true representation of my heart and it felt it felt a little bit harsh because at the end of the day, you know, God is a redeemer. As long as you don't blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you can be redeemed. And with that being said, we should celebrate this testimony. It shouldn't be condemnation because there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. So none of us should be condemning her, but we should be celebrating it. And I feel like in my previous video, I was kind of operating from like a place of very harsh judgment. And here's the thing. I still do have judgment that I'm going to share, but I think it's a little bit more balanced. And I, I think it's a, little, it's a little bit more biblical. So that's why I'm redoing this video. All right. But let's continue. Four years ago, I started my own because I think truly it was out of pure rebellion. 
And, tr and like, honestly, I'm such a like independent person that I never felt the need for a man to provide for me, like have a man in my life to provide for me. Um, so I started OnlyFans about four years ago and I climbed to top 0.01%. I'm not saying that to brag. I'm saying that the devil can truly give you things in this life. He has a budget though. Good morning, everybody. Okay. So really quick, I have a couple was that the whole testimony? I seem kind of short. Um, that was clearly not the whole story. But as she said, she made like $10 million in her career. Um, I guess I can just say it because, well, I can't say. It. She made like $10 million in her career. Um, you know, let me play this real quick. My brain is all over the place. It's probably because I haven't slept. My, I'm, <laughs> my brain is all over. Let me play this by Pearl Davis. I don't know if you guys know just pearly things. She has a very uh, a very popular podcast on YouTube, and she did not like the conversion. Um, just to be nice about it, let me play her response. Pearl Davis is losing her mind over this Nala Ray conversion to Christianity. Watch this. This former sex worker, Michael Knowles, go back and forth about me saying I need prayers. You guys keep saying I'm obsessed. I just want the truth to come out because again, this happens all over the country where stars come out, say they're sorry, and you guys hand them a microphone and make them a spokesperson of the word and nobody has a problem with it. Jesus hated false prophets. He hated them. He went, <laughs> he, he tore up the temple, guys. Pearl, no one is saying that this yeah, I don't think she's a false prophet, but I, I, I do have a level of agreement with what she said because I do think it is a little bit irresponsible. To platform somebody. Let me be careful with how I say this. I do think it can be somewhat irresponsible when somebody is so new in their journey, when somebody is so new in their conversion, when somebody is so vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy, I do think it is somewhat irresponsible to do interviews so early on. I'm not saying she can never share her testimony. I think her testimony is incredible. It's a miraculous testimony. I'm just saying maybe take a little bit of time. Maybe take a little bit of time out of the spotlight. Maybe take a little bit of time off of social media. Maybe take a little bit of time. And maybe she did that. Maybe I'm completely missing it. Maybe she did take some time. Maybe I'm missing the timeline from where she stopped doing SEX content and gave her life to Christ. Maybe there was a gap in between where she took a break and she took some time to really focus and, and commit herself to Christ. And when I say commit, I mean just getting closer to him, just studying the word, just worshiping, just establishing a prayer life. And the reason why those things are so important is because this is a very vulnerable time. The enemy understands that you're a baby Christian, that you're fresh. I know you grew up, you're, you're a PK, but you're really a baby Christian because like Christians don't do SEX content on the internet. So you weren't a Christian before. So you're a baby Christian at this point in time. And the, the, the devil knows that. The enemy knows that. And also something that you have to be mindful of is that you have created for yourself an appetite. Unlike any other that people have experienced before because not not i mean people 
from a lust standpoint, I think we all struggle with lust in some capacity, right? We all struggle with lust. In, oh man, I'm trying to find like a picture to, to show of her as I'm talking about her, but I'm kind of struggling. Maybe I could just play this video. Um, we all struggle from a lust standpoint, but I don't, not, not very many of us. And as she said, she was like 0.01% on, on the platform that she was on. Not very many of us know what it's like to post a video of ourselves and then receive hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars per month totaling to $10 million per month. I mean, in total, like $10 million in total throughout her, throughout her career, which was not a long career. It was a relatively short career. So there's a certain appetite that you've developed for lust, for, for fast money, for potentially material things, for fame, for all of these things. And one, one thing that she said was because Michael Knowles was kind of pressing her on the same, on the same point. And one thing that she said was that essentially God delivered her immediately from all of that, which I believe because God is capable of doing anything. So I believe it, but here's the thing. Let's just be honest with ourselves there's been moments in my life where God has delivered me from something and that appetite came back and that temptation came back and I fell back into that same sin that God delivered me from. You might have the same experience if you're willing to admit it. And somebody like Nyla She was a friend of the enemy. Now she's a friend of God. The spiritual warfare and the spiritual attack that she's going to face is going to be heavy. And it's coming. So maybe, potentially, it might be a good idea to just lay low for a little bit and not put yourself in the spotlight and not do any interviews and just kind of lay low. I'm not saying to isolate yourself. That's probably the worst thing you could do right now is to isolate yourself. But rather surround yourself with a solid foundation of believers that can help you during this time that can encourage you, that can pray for you, that can intercede for you, that can go to war for you in the spiritual realm because the attacks are coming. You were boldly working for the enemy. Now you're boldly working against the enemy. The attacks are coming. It's nothing that you can't handle, but you still have to be mindful. You have to be prepared for it. You have to understand that it's coming. I think it's incredible that she converted to Christianity. I think it's incredible that she had such a radical transformation. I mean, that's a miracle testimony to say, you know, one day I'm doing this type of content, making this type of money, and then the next day I'm just going to give it up. And I don't feel any temptation. I don't feel any, any desire. I don't feel anything like that is that's incredible. That's incredible. I don't I don't have that same testimony. It took me. I'm still working some things out. You know what I mean? Like it, but that's an incredible testimony. And I don't doubt for one second that God did that. One thing I didn't like though, what she said, Michael knows was like, do you regret your time as an SEX worker? Like, do you, do you, do you regret your time making those videos and putting them on the internet for men to consume? And she said, no, she said no, because her testimony of being a former SEX worker is going to allow her to connect 
with current SEX workers in a way that she wouldn't have been able to had she not gone through it. For me personally, I would regret it. And I would take it back. Because she said that she wouldn't take it back. I would take it back. Me personally. Because just think about the thousands of potential men, maybe even tens of thousands, even more of potential men that were led into sin, that were further led into bondage as a result of the content. If I were her, which obviously I'm not, and I was doing that, if I could take it back for the sake of those people who I was leading into sin, who I was tempting, who I was leading into further bondage, I would take it back. I would. That's just me personally. I understand what she's saying, but I would take it back personally. Like, I don't need to have, I, I, I say this, like, you know, I have a, I have a shameful testimony. I'm sure many people have a shameful testimony, but you know, that testimony that I have, even though it was like shameful and I, and I regret it and like, I would take it back and I would do things differently. That testimony, it created a genuine relationship with God a pure relationship with God in my heart. And I'm, I'm, I'm grateful and I'm thankful for that. But never in a million years would I wish that my kids would have some crazy testimony of how they went astray and how they were doing drugs or doing, you know, what she was doing or whatever, and then came to Christ. Like, I, I wouldn't wish my kids for that. Like, just give me just a nice... You know what I'm saying? Just give me just a straight like path to Christ. And I know sometimes that doesn't work out. But like if I could take some things back in terms of like my testimony and some of the mistakes that I made and, you know, some of the things that I put certain people through as a result of my actions, I would most definitely take it back. And I would trust that my relationship with God would still come about in some way, if that makes sense. But overall, as far as this story is concerned, I'm happy. I just want to see her continue on the path. Um, and, you know, I, I, I want to see her inspire other people to do the same. You know, um, this is a W in terms of saving souls, evangelizing, and really showing a true transformation for the kingdom of God. Because I think it's genuine. Some people don't think it's genuine. I watched the whole interview. Um, I feel like, you know what, it, she doesn't really have anything to benefit by lying. She doesn't really have anything to benefit by lying because she very well could have made another $10 million doing what she was doing and could have stacked up, you know, $20 million. And she could have did that for the next five, six, seven years and then been filthy rich. Like, I don't think she, there's really nothing for her to benefit. If anything, she's sacrificing quite a bit and that shows that there is a transformation happening and i think we should be cheering for that and we should be praying for her you know anywho let me know what y'all think get on my comments like this video i'm out y'all